Hey everyone, this is Leanne from Of Love and Ship Lap and the founder of Sub That Sublimation Graphics and Tutorials on Facebook. If you're joining us on YouTube, please be sure to come join our Facebook group where all of our videos air live before they are added to our channel unedited. And of course, if you're catching us live on Facebook, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Those links are in the video description depending on where you're watching. Today I'm so excited to show you guys the new iColor 250. You're familiar with iColor for their line of white toner printers, which give you the capabilities to print on just about any substrate, including dark and cotton garments. But this one is a little bit different. The iColor 250 is an all-in-one printer and cutter for sticker slash label media and magnetic paper. This means that you can produce high quality professional stickers for both outdoor and generic use for a fraction of the cost of what you would be able to pay them, buy them for. This printer looked really cool when I saw the promotional video last week, but now that I actually have it and have gotten to try it and use it, I am just mind blown at how cool it is. Not only is this printer fast and easy to set up, but the interface is very user friendly. And you guys know that I rarely use that word when it comes to software. I found the simplicity of this machine to be a step above. There are a lot of considerations taken in everything about this printer, and I feel that it makes all the difference in its usability for those who may not be super tech savvy, but are looking to be able to add an item like this to their business. So let's start with unboxing. Um, I didn't do an unboxing video simply because sometimes it takes a really long time and I was concerned you know that if there was an issue or whatever, it would just be too long. But it turned out it took me less than 20 minutes. I took the printer out and it's basically just the printer itself and then the roll holder pieces that you have to attach and the blade and the print cartridge. It comes with this great little quick start picture guide. But if you're like me and you don't really do well with pictures without words for instructions, then there is an entire manual that is available on the iColor website and a sticker right on the printer to remind you to download it. I went ahead and downloaded that and followed the steps to get everything set up. And as I said, it took roughly 20 minutes and then I spent a good another 20 minutes reading through the manual um, to get a feel for the software. This printer is so impressive. Okay, let's start with the media. So <laughs> you have two primary sticker medias that are available for a continuous roll. A continuous roll allows you to print and cut any shape that you want. The minimum cutting distance is a half an inch up to 12 inches of a continuous cut. So if you're gonna print thousands of stickers, you would just keep doing them in 12 inch uh, sheets to be able to do that. The first media is the premium high gloss paper. And this would be your standard sticker media that you would use for just any everyday sticker or label. I tested it out yesterday. It's got this, um, it's really nice. It's a little hard to see with the light behind the camera at the moment, but you guys will be able to see it a little closer when we cut our own stickers. These is, it's a nice thick quality sticker paper. The gloss finish is beautiful. Honestly, I would have thought I just bought this from a store. That's how nice it is. So you get to print something really professional with this. It's recommended that you use the die and cartridge with the high gloss premium paper to get the best results. But then there is also the pigment ink cartridge, which you, is recommended for use with the high gloss bop paper. This is a UV resistant um, sticker material that's perfect for things like car decals. Again, we see questions about car decals and stickers in general all the time. So you got two great medias that you can use with this printer um, that are both great solutions regardless of what you're using. Now these are water resistant papers, so it's not like the, the ink is just gonna wash right off. They're not your standard cheap paper sticker. So a lot of what, um, a lot of sticker media that you would just generically buy and print with your home inkjet printer, it doesn't really have the kind of durability that a professional sticker does. This gives you that for pennies. I ran the cost and if you were to use the high gloss buff media with the recommended pigment ink cartridge, um, it comes out to be one and a half cents per square inch. One and a half cents. <laughs> so so unbelievably cheap to print with this printer. When you order your media, um, 
you'll, what you'll get is either one that you order comes two rolls. They are four and three quarters inches wide. And again, that maximum cutting distance is four and a quarter and they are 150 feet. So you get two in a package. It's 139 for the high quality BOP media and 129 for the premium high gloss media. What I think is so cool and innovative is that they have these little chips um, in the spindles that are in the core that when you put it into the printer in the designated roll holder, it automatically adjusts the blade settings. No guesswork involved. What? I know. It's so cool. It's probably my favorite feature because, I mean, I've had a silhouette cutter for years and sometimes dealing with adjusting your blade is... It's a lot. So the fact that you don't have to worry about any of that when you use the designated media is just incredible. Of course, there's always the question of if you can use aftermarket media, and you can. The printer has the ability to scan and read the media that you input. So if you happen to buy a roll like this that's similar size, that has you know circles or squares or ovals, rectangles, whatever it is that you're using, you can use the printer hub to, which is the software for it, to be able to scan it in, read the media, set the designated guidelines, and go ahead and get your printer, your stickers printed. So there's that option as well. And of course, if you do that, you'll have to manually adjust the blades. And it comes with this universal core so that it will fit in there since you won't have the chip for the printer to read. I think that just the ability to be able to do that is outstanding. And of course, it's always recommended that you'll get the best results by using the media that is approved and manufactured for the printer. As I did mention, the cost is very low. One and a half cents per square inch for printing. That's great. And just for perspective, I did a little digging to see what the going rate was for stickers. The average sticker size is one and a half inch by one and a half inch. If you were to buy like a promotional sticker or a thank you sticker, you might stick on your packages if you're shipping a lot of items, anything like that. And 50 of those stickers averages a sale point of $9 to $12 for 50 stickers. You can print them for roughly $2.40 with this printer. That means that if you wanted to be in the business of selling promotional stickers in bulk, you could very quickly make your money back on this printer. Another common question is about the ink cartridge. The, this printer features another unique technology. It has, two, it has an all-in-one print cartridge and you can choose between the pigment, uh, pigment cartridge and the dye cartridge. Now you can use either cartridge with either media, so you don't necessarily have to buy both. But unlike a traditional inkjet printer where you have to worry about clogged print heads and print lines getting air in them, this printer has everything all in one built into the cartridge. And when you change your cartridge, you change your printer head. And then there's no printer lines anyways for the ink to go through. This saves so much stress and so much maintenance. And it is amazing that you can just pop out one cartridge in media and pop in the other so that you always have what you need for your business if you're choosing to print a combination of everyday stickers and UV, res UV resistant stickers as well. I thought that that feature was just unbelievably cool. And the cartridges are very reasonably priced. They're a high capacity cartridge and it is CMY, CMY in one. The dye based one is $79 and the pigment one is $84. So the printer itself is $29.95. So a total all-in cost of about $3,500 when you factor in shipping and tax and all that other stuff to get you started for this unit if you were to order all of the available media. The magnet media, which I haven't really mentioned yet, is um, going to be available in a few weeks. I've already ordered it. I can't wait for it to come in. Um, but it's just not available yet. So I'll do another video when that one comes along so that I can show you that. Either way, the cost per use for this printer is so low and the ability to resale stickers and magnets, even at a wholesale bulk rate, is just unbelievable. You can honestly beat the prices of places like Sticker Mule that you can offer better pricing than they give if, you're, if they are selling 150,000 stickers at once. You can seriously beat their prices, it's amazing. Okay, so in addition to all of that, then there's the software. If you are coming from any kind of a vinyl program like Silhouette, Sir Cuts A Lot, or Cricut, 
you are going to find that this uh, design or the software program is pretty much the same. A lot of the steps are the same, so it makes it easy to transition and very user friendly. You have the ability to import any graphic, trace it, and then set your offset to print your stickers and cut them. Or you can even design using the basic vector tools that are included. Now, it doesn't have every tool imaginable, but I am honestly really impressed by what is available. Between shape tools and gradient fill tools, text, manipulating curves and lines, you have a lot of vector editing capabilities. The program accepts pretty much all types of graphics. You can even import AI files, um, EPS and SVG if you're looking editable vector. And then of course you can choose all of your standard uh, flattened graphics such as a PNG, JPEG, or TIFF. The software, as I mentioned, is very user-friendly. It has a great intuitive interface, and I know that you guys are going to love it. If you're interested in purchasing this printer, you can use the code SUBTHAT, S-U-B-T-H-A-T, to order it right from the iColor website. Everything is ready to ship except for the magnetic media, which is will be available in a few weeks, as I mentioned and the code will get you 5% off. I think this is the first time we've had a promotional code and it's eligible for all iColor consumables and the iColor 250. So like I said, you can order that right on the website, iColorPrint.com. Those links are in the video description as well. So let's go ahead and I'll pop over to the computer and I'll show you guys how this program works and how to print a sticker. You guys, it's so fast. I'm really excited for you to see this in action. So let's just pop over there and get going. As I mentioned, you can find the manual for the printer right on the iColor website. You do this by clicking on support at iColorPrint.com and scrolling down to the printer that you are working with, clicking view all, and it'll bring you here. I like that the user manuals are easily available online because then I don't have to go searching for them. The manual is very thorough. So as I mentioned at the beginning of my video, if you are not someone who thrives with picture only instructions, then you'll want to take time to download this and read through it. It covers the steps to get your printer set up, which again is just setting up the roll holder, adding the blade, and setting in your print cartridge. It was relatively easy, it took me about 20 minutes. But this manual also covers pretty much everything you might need to know about the printer, such as how to use custom die cut labels. It walks you through the basics of getting started with the software as well. The software has two components. One is the Uninet iColor Print Hub, and the second is iColor Custom Cut. So let's just talk about the Print Hub first. This is exactly as it sounds, the Print Hub. When you have your job queued up, it will give you a cost estimation for how much it costs for that product, which is a really great tool if you don't want to use a general assessment for how much it costs to print something. If you want something more exact, the cost optimizer will be able to tell that for you. The print alignment tab would be for if you're using die cut media. That is, I'm sorry, if you're using pre-cut media, that would be those like this in the picture that already are rectangles or squares or circles, whatever shape it is that you might have purchased and are not specifically developed by eye color. And then you have your printer settings tab where you would click on advanced settings and it would open up to allow you to adjust your blade settings. Again, if you're not using eye color specific media, if you're using eye color specific media, that little chip is going to do all the work for you. So you don't even have to worry about this beyond checking how much it costs you to print something. Next, we have the eye color custom cut software. We'll start by launching a new project, and I'm gonna choose just to do this 4.25 by two inches. You can set a custom size or choose one of the presets. Keep in mind that your maximum width that you are able to print and cut is four and a quarter. This interface has a lot to offer, and that is one of the things that I think is so impressive. If you wanted to create your own custom graphic in this program, you could using all of these vector design tools. You can use shapes, gradients, eraser tools, and pen tools, and you can completely create something from scratch in this program. There's also your standard fill and stroke color alignments, 
sorry, your fill and stroke color tools, as well as setting your joints for your points if you happen to use the pen tool, shape tool, or pencil tool. You'll even find all of your system fonts available so that you can choose any font that you have for use in a design. Additionally, because this is a vector program, if you were to use the shape tool, you'll be able to do things with your paths that you create. You can also rearrange your layers or hide or, or, hide or show them or lock or unlock them using the layers tab or the layers panel down here in the bottom. And you can create clipping masks, clipping paths, and distribute your designs or align them however necessary. So if you're familiar with Silhouette, Cricut, Sir Cuts -a -Lot, or Inkscape, then you're going to find that everything that's within this program pulls on all of those different programs to give you the best of what you need to create your own graphics inside of this program. Most of us are probably going to be printing designs that either we've purchased or we have our someone's logo. So to do that, the standard sticker printing, you're going to start by going ahead and hitting that import icon. You can choose any kind of graphic. If you happen to use an AI EPS or SVG file, you'll be able to make edits to the different colors and the layers all throughout your layers panel. I just happened to import a PNG for us of one of the new designs I've released at www.ofloveandshiplap.us. And when you're doing something like this, or if it's a logo, it's going to come in as a flattened graphic. So that would be your JPEGs, your PNGs, or your TIFF graphics. So we'll start by resizing this. I want to make sure always that key proportions is checked. And I'm just going to bring this down to one and three quarters of an inch, since we did make our space two inches. Next, we'll click on that trace tool. In our trace panel, we have the option to make edits as necessary. If you don't think that you've gotten an adequate trace, you can decrease or increase the slider here to get full coverage. Be sure you don't increase it so far up that you lose all ability to trace. I have already mentioned this, but I'll mention it again. If you are familiar with using the trace tool or print and cut feature of Silhouette or Cricut, those hobby vinyl cutters, then you'll see that this looks almost identical to that, which is one of the reasons why I find this program to be user friendly. You can hit update preview to make sure that you've got the appropriate trace that you're looking for. And there's also some options to smooth out your lines or improve your threshold. If you're using a vector graphic or a graphic that has solid colors, not gradients, not a roster graphic like this is, then you can also choose to break apart your outlines or add additional layers. So there's a lot of neat little features in here that you can play around with, and I strongly encourage you to do that. But for just regular old printer cut, print, sticker, printer, print and cut, this is all that you would need to do. The next step is going to be to add an offset because anytime you print a sticker, you want a little bit of a border around it. To do that, we'll go to path and then offset path. Now you have a few options here. If you choose regular, it's basically just going to offset the stroke that you already have. The only reason why we'd use the stroke that we already have is if we wanted our sticker to be exactly the outline of the design that we have cut. That would be great if you were looking for a borderless sticker. I prefer the rounded option because I think it gives the smoothest look. And then there's also the bevel option. Additionally, you have the choice to check inset offset. So if you check this, it's going to inset your cut line. And this is ideal if you have a design that expands a little bit into a bleed margin and you want to make sure that you're cutting closer to the actual design. Of course, that isn't the case with this graphic, but I'm still going to show it to you guys. And you can use the slider to simply adjust your settings accordingly. So let's go back to our rounded option. This is a bit more than I want, so let's try 
0 0.05. I feel like that's appropriate. You could even do 0 0.03 if you just wanted a little bit of a white outline. I'm going to go with 0 0.04. And then we'll hit OK. Now these layers are two separate layers. So you want to make sure that you click and drag and right click and group them so that they will be one in, if you're going to move stuff around or if you plan to duplicate them. Now you can duplicate a few different ways. You can right click and then copy and paste. You can, with it selected, go up to object and select duplicate. And this is great if you're doing a 12 inch sheet because then you can go ahead and set that you want how many columns or how many rows, the spacing in between them, and group them as one. So if I was going to print a whole sheet for a business, this would be so fast to be able to do that. This is about all that we have to do to be able to print our sticker, believe it or not. It is ready to go, and we will simply go to File and then Print and see our printer come up. We want to make sure that Print and Cut is selected. Now I'm going to flip this back over to the printer before I hit OK because this moves very quickly and I don't want you guys to miss it. All right, so we'll go ahead and hit OK. And... Okay, so it literally took 37 seconds from the time we print it, hit the print button, and to it to be print and cut. So there's a nice close-up for you of our stickers. And if we can just peel that right off so you guys can see how great the outline looks. See how great the quality is on the graphic as well. I mean, I am like so impressed by this. <laughs> So there you have it. That is the iColor 250 print and cut, printer and cutter in one for sticker and media paper. This was the high premium high, the premium high gloss media with the dye ink. So this would be great for everyday stickers, stickers that you might stick on your packages. And as I mentioned, it is water resistant. It's not just gonna rinse right off or anything because this isn't just a standard cheap paper sticker. If you guys have any questions, be sure to leave them below and we will be doing more demos on the different types of stickers that you can make with this printer. If you're interested in purchasing it, head over to say or head over to icolorprint.com and there is the option to do financing both in-house or use some of your financing options like a firm with a ghost card. So this is a great option to add to your business this holiday season, and I hope you guys love these as much as I do. I'm really impressed with the quality and the output, and honestly, the price per print is something you can't beat. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.